Leavers Podcast, Thursday, August 15th. Thank you for listening to us. Hey, whoever you are out there listening to this right now, I hope you have the most wonderful day today. You know what I want to say, Gregory? What's that? If your name's not Malik Perry, you matter. <laughs> That's so mean. Uh, hey, I'm Greg. Nice to talk to you again. With me today is my co-host, Gaseous Winston. Okay, listen, I get one gash on my leg, and now all of a sudden, like, I'm just, it's gash jokes left and right. Swing gash over here. How How is the gash today? It's fine. Uh, like I said, daily update, I will be keeping my leg, which is massive. I'm a big right leg guy. Uh, I depend on it very much so, even though I'm a left-footed jumper. Even though jumping doesn't matter, because I can't really jump like that. But I, I get to keep both my legs, so that's a blessing. Mm. Yeah, thank God you get to keep your legs after hitting yourself in the shin. That's <laughs> so, well, you know, Greg, so the thing, dramatic. The thing is, I don't know if you, I don't, I don't know if you took any like pre med courses or anything in college, but I did dabble in a few. Um, the infections that happen in leg wounds can spread really, really fast uh, if you don't do the proper care on it. So I got a nice little routine that I'm going through right now. Make sure I clean the wound air the wound out, bandage the wound, um, really working my best to eradicate uh, this issue uh, swiftly and uh, the correct way. Are you a big infections guy? Not really. I was always under the impression that infections were pretty like, it's more of a mental hurdle than anything. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's very easy to do away with if you handle it properly. That's shocking to me because you have a pretty infectious personality. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you want to start us off with a YouTube comment of the day today, Cart? God, I hate us. Um, let's go with let's go with this one. This one comes from Dwight John Wall, which is a great a great name, by the way. I watched this show so much that I had a dream. I met y'all at a bar, so it makes me wonder what are the chances y'all make a trip to Knoxville. First of all, Dwight John Wall, thank you that you watched this show so much and that you had a dream about us. Uh, what was my fit? Okay, come on. Was we I was that was I that boy? Did I have a Moscow mule? What that? That's what? out of line. That's out of line. <laughs> Did I have a Moscow? I'd like more details about this dream. Yeah, I I guess I would like more details about the dream too. I feel like dream me is probably insufferable. Just I mean, do we have to have this moment? I, I just feel like most like dream versions of things are a little like exaggerated. Like they're just like more loudly pronounced dramatic versions of whatever you really are. And I would imagine that if like there's a fictional dream version of me in the heads of other people that listen to us, I'm probably insufferable. <laughs> Uh, how do I put this in the most loving way possible? Greg, you're that right now, my friend. You are you're out there. You let people know you call, you call it like it is. You say your feelings. We don't need to put you in dreamland for that. You operate that way right now. I don't think I'm that insufferable right now. No, 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 not, not the insufferable part of it. I'm talking about like you make your presence felt to me. Dreams is like doing something that you don't do in real life. <laughs> I mean, I, <laughs> Like maybe in his dream, I don't, you were, I don't think like you're maybe, trying to insult me, but like I, I am implying I would be unbearable to be around. In a no, dream. no, no, no. And you I'm were like, yeah, like, something you wouldn't be in real life. No, like something you wouldn't be in real. So like in Dwight John Wall's dream, maybe you're racist. I hope not. I hope not too. But I'm saying like the, in the in the White John Wall's dream, I hope I'm in shape. You know, I just realized something. You could have taken this gash and turned it into me hurting you. We had no witnesses on that course. All we know is you and I went golfing and you came out with a gash. What's more believable? You gashed yourself or G got a little upset? Honestly, if you think about it, probably me gashing myself. Yeah, that's true. This is true. Uh, Dwight John Wall, we got to get you in the Discord, my friend, because that's my favorite username of all time. It might be my favorite comment of all time. Really appreciate you listening to the show every single day and supporting us. Uh, the reality is I don't think it's super likely we get to Knoxville. 
Cards, do you disagree with me on that? Uh, I don't see it. Even, I mean, I would love to go to Knoxville one day, but I don't see it happening any, any time in the near future. Yeah, I don't want to lie to our listeners. I think uh, there was probably a really good window for us a couple of years ago to go to Knoxville back when we were doing college hoops to go. But yeah, fa- families take precedent these days. Other than the Zoom calls we get to do with each other, we don't get to go out and do as much cool shit in person anymore. Yeah, family taking precedent is such bullshit. Should we go anti-family for a couple of years? Dog, I've been waiting for you to say that for so long. <laughs> <laughs> I'm down for it. Just let Dog, me do let's it. do it. We can talk offline. Aaron okay. Rodgers has the the formula. You want to be uh, high, extremely high with a ukulele and Shailene Woodley? Yeah, but just vaccinate me. But besides that, like, sign me up. All right, let's go to the Discord. <laughs> uh, join the Discord. If you want to get high with Shailene Woodley and play the ukulele with us, uh, the Discord is the number whoa, one. Whoa, 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 whoa. One more YouTube comment. This comes from Sci Fi Sci. I think it is. If you read this comment, I will join the Discord. You got to join. I read it. That's it. There was nothing but else this- with the comment? No, he just says, if you read this comment, I'll join the Discord. Sci Fi Sci. Let's see you in the cord, my friend. Welcome. It's your welcome. time. Well, welcome, Sci Fi Sci. Yeah, join the Discord. Uh, we, th- here's a new reason to join the Discord beyond the college football dynasty that's ongoing and just getting to interact with us on a daily basis. Uh, we are organizing a huge sleepers fantasy football league officially and shout out to Tristan Freeman and Connor hope. They've kind of taken the reins on this and are, are making sure we coordinate this together. But I messaged them. We were in a group chat with them yesterday. I said, my number one thing, if we're going to do a fantasy football league for sleepers, there's one rule and one rule only. Everybody has to be able to do it. We can't cap this at 20 people. We can't cap this at any number of people. We got 250 people in the Discord. If 250 people want to do it, 250 people are going to do it. Tristan and Connor claim they have a way for this to work. So uh, we're going to put some sign-up sheet stuff out there in the next couple of days. We will promote this more formally over the next couple full episodes of this show. But obviously football season is getting close and we got to get draft stuff going. If you want to participate in the Sleepers Fantasy League, which may include hundreds of people we don't know yet, uh, you're going to have to be in the Discord to get that information. So if that's something that sounds like it would be fun to you, join the Discord. There will be money prizes for people. Uh, We're going to find a way, even if 200 people do this card, we're going to find a way to crown one winner as the ultimate glory champion of Sleepers Fantasy Football. And I can tell everyone right now, it won't be you. Mm -hmm. No chance. Zero percent chance. 0% 0% chance. Uh, there, There's no chance, even if I try or don't try. And I probably won't try. It's not going to happen. You are also 0-3 in the college football dynasty league right now. I was mm. up watching because you streamed your game against Jay Hart last night. Uh, this game went, what, until about 1 in the morning, Eastern time. And mm. you had a lead. You blew the lead. You're mm-hmm. now your BYU Cougars that you are the head man of are now 0 and 3 in three weeks yeah. in this dynasty. Uh, some are saying you're on the hot seat. What do you say to those critics? Uh, honestly, I, I think I might. Th- I want to get fired. Uh, I think BYU football stinks. So you're blaming the fictional BYU program for you being 0 and 3 in a video game? Yes. Okay. Uh, what happened on that last drive last night? Because you had the ball 114 left down, what, four? I felt great. Yeah, yeah I, I mismanaged my timeouts, and also I, I I broke the number one cardinal sin. I was looking at the chat while playing the game, and I listened to Tristan's big back ass. And l- l- I want to make something very, very known here. Tristan walks around the Discord like he's the best college player like in, on the video game. I want to let it be known. He most certainly is not. He is a luck merchant. He is a computer merchant. He is not that good at this game. And that is evident of why Dion, when he didn't get the breaks last night, Dion beat the breaks off his ass, beat him by like 40. Because if he doesn't get the bounces going his way, he will not win. Dion smacked Tristan last night? I didn't even know that. Yes, by 40. Dion's up there in the rankings for players in this league, though, right? Isn't it like it's Dion? Is, no, no, there's a couple people up there, but I'll tell you who's not up there. It's Tristan Freeman. He's nowhere close. <laughs> I'm getting some Dion Sanders energy from you right now. Like you're 0 and 3 and you're picking an antagonist to go at. No, I'm just, I'm letting it be known. I know I'm bad. I'm bad at the game. 
That's on me. I'm bad. Yeah, I didn't. I thought you were good at the game based on your fake. exhibition results. It's fake. It's fake. I I don't think you can actually be good at the game if you can't like win with the BYU's of the world. And I don't know if I'm on that level yet. I think I need a good team to win. Yeah, like you got to be able to take like a a C grade. Yeah, I, I need a team that has all ratings in the 80s to win games. Like I I got an 80 overall team with a 75 defense and an 81 like offense. Like that's just not going to get it done. Got it. Yeah, I, I, the true grades seem like they can take any team, any playbook, and find a way to win. And that's certainly not you, and it's not me right now. But uh, and that's fine. With that said, my team is one and zero in the dynasty right now. I, why am I the only people that person that's played three games? I don't know, but you're zero and three, and it's not. It's really a bad look for us, to be honest. So can you please get it together? Like, what's the goal at this point? Can you make a bowl game here? Is that realistic? No, I, didn't I just tell you what my goal is? I want to lose every game. <laughs> that doesn't help you. There's no tanking. That's fine. If I get fired, I can get another team, right? I don't know that that's how it works in the dynasty mode. It might be. Oh, uh, well, I need to figure that out because if it is, then I'm going to start throwing the season. <laughs> All right. Well, join the Discord either way, and uh, you get to participate in this chaos instead of just listen to it. Okay, comments from the Discord today. Just Snacky kicks us off by saying, uh, oh, no, excuse me. I missed two. Sleeve Nash kicks us off. Was the Olympic semifinal one of the best games you've ever seen? Top 10. What do you think? It was it was up there nostalgia wise, like just the feeling of the goats um, and my goats of basketball um, doing what they do. It was it was pretty special. Yeah, it may be recency bias, but I would put both the semifinal and the final in my top 10 most exciting basketball games I've ever seen, because uh, while, while it wasn't as like jam packed with drama. The final to me was still a one possession game late. You had all the special like Wemby moments early. It felt like it was a true Wemby versus the old generation. And seeing Curry do what Curry did in the final three minutes, like that was the peak of the Olympics to me, even even over the semifinal. I didn't think the semi could be topped, but Curry's four threes in a row is like something I will truly tell my grandchildren about and make them watch YouTube highlights if YouTube's still around 20 years from now. So... Yeah, I put both in the top 10. Uh, moving on here, we have a comment from Ethan who says, just a warning, please do not discuss the Michigan State overseas trip unless you are in the gym. I'm sorry, can you read that one more time? Please do not discuss the Michigan State overseas trip unless you are in the gym. Okay, got it. No hablo inglés. Just Snacky says, do you think Big T is better than, Car- better than Carson Cooper? Do I think Big T is better than Carson Cooper? Yes. Yes. I do too. Uh, Sully says, what are some top lore in this Discord? For example, when you went through Lenardi's Bracketology, Carter still referred to McNeese as the geese, and that hopefully will never be forgotten in the history of this Discord. What are your like top three or four sleepers Discord lore moments? Um, The geese is definitely one. That, that's probably number one. Um. The other ones, I think you're going to have to join the Discord to find out. Oh, come on. That's lame. Give people a teaser. I may or may not have referred to some head coaches as war criminals. <laughs> I think a lot of the moments have been us saying inappropriate things. Uh, there was one night we found out somebody was leaking things from our Discord to other Discords, like enemy Discords, and that was fun. Uh what else we had? I mean, it's always dramatic whenever anybody leaves. Like we had uh, our, our boy Jay Parks, who didn't like a music comment that you said, or actually that I said. Yeah, and you said. It was shocking. It was me and not you. But why do you say that? Because you're a lot more controversially mean than I am. I think I don't like, con- like I thought, yeah. I don't like confrontation. That's a lie. I don't like confrontation. I I, I don't like confrontation. You love confrontation. I actively try to shy away from confrontation in my everyday life. Okay, I know, I'm gonna need everyone to comment on this video and let me know yes or no for does Greg like confrontation? Because I think you're gonna get a resounding answer. You do like confrontation. I think we got to define confrontation because there's a difference between like banter, debating, and there's real beef confrontation. 
I am very much like a need to make sure everyone's okay person. Like words are like, like words sting. And if there's real relationships being violated because of confrontation, like I'm very insecure about that. You know this. I do. Yeah. But also you you love well, I guess you love debating and arguing. That's it's not just, necessarily it's confrontation. Podcast banter. Yeah. It's not real life confrontation. Real life confrontation is like F you, I'm leaving the Discord. I'm like, whoa. Yeah. I wish I could leave sometimes. <laughs> you you leave for days at a time all the time. Uh just snacky says segment idea, make your best all time college basketball starting five. However, you can't go over 70 points per game between the five players. If you want to make it tougher, try not to look up the player totals until after and see if you got it under 70. I love that. A lot. There's no way I can do this. Can we do that? So we we already have our topics planned for today's episode, and then Riley let's, brings the topics for Friday. Can we do it for Monday? Let's do it for Monday, but you need to promise you don't look up any information before. Deal. Okay. Deal. Okay. Yeah. Great idea. Love that. Love that concept. Just now. We'll do it for look, Monday. I'm look it up. Purdue Fox says with Miles Colvin releasing what appears to be a New York Times bestselling children's book, which NCAA basketball players would write the best and worst books? Mm. God, here comes low hanging fruit cart. Uh, Tyler Kolick would write the worst book. Um, and honestly, my stock is down on we need we might need to redo the purdue wing segment i didn't know they were writing children's books they they can't be as high as they are if they're writing children's books okay yeah um why what's wrong with writing children's books how many children's books do you think uconn players have written in the past two years zero exactly terrace reeves probably read a few though do as the champions do. You think so? Yeah. Terrace Reed strikes me as a big Dr. Seuss guy. Like, how so? Just like, I like feel like. Like green eggs and ham? Yeah, I just think like one fish, two fish, red fish, drop ball out of bounds. Like that. <laughs> I, I don't know. Miss, miss defensive assignment fish. <laughs> yeah, it feels like it's up his alley. Malik says, uh, please send me info on how to watch MSU overseas game. Yes, no. well, Malik. <laughs> it's a no for you? Yeah, no. Hell no. Go find it. Abe says, who is winning in a seven-game series? 2021 Baylor or 2024 UConn? Ooh, I don't know if Baylor would have any big for, like, clinging. I'd probably take UConn. I struggle with this because Gonzaga was better than Baylor that year, in my opinion. But Baylor just was the perfect matchup. And I do think those guards could torch Klingon. You think? Yeah. I think they they would put Klingon in drop, and I think they would just feast on him completely. Uh, yeah, Hurley could adjust, though. I'm going to take Baylor. I'm yeah. not mad at that. It's a, it's a, it's a tough question. I'm going to take Baylor. I think they're the bigger mismatch matchup problem. Sleeve Nash says, oh, come on. Are we really surprised that Merez Johnson has looked great against guys like Jason Jackstis and Benham Rickhouse? I mean, seriously, Tomislav's only been on campus for two weeks. Let's not blow this out of proportion. We all know Merez is going to be great, but let's be clear. Tomislav is the starting center, and he's going to be a key piece for this team. It's not about who's better right now. It's about giving Tomislav the same time in the gym and weight room that Merez has had. Sure, Merez has been good against Jason, but are we really shocked? Let's not turn an anthill into a volcano here. Iron sharpens iron, and I can't wait to see how much better these guys make each other with their different styles of play. Let's give Tomislav the time he needs to grow and see what he can become. Dog, he's 21. Ant Hill into a volcano followed by Iron Sharpens Iron deserves a week long ban for the discord, <laughs> for what it, for what it's worth. Yeah, Thomas Lav's old, first off. Time to grow. He's damn near 22 right now. Uh second, to be clear, Merez is who Thomas Lav is going against. I don't know what we're talking about. Oh, M- Merez is feasting on Humrick House. Merez is going against Thomas Lav, and Merez is winning. That is the implication here. So let's just not like beat around this. Like who do we think Tom's just like playing off to the side by himself all day? 
And Merez is feasting on Humrick House, who, by the way, you guys all tell me is incredible. So now we're going to downplay Humrick House? Like if Merez is beasting him, that means nothing? Like, I said on. none of that. Come on. I'm just saying. I don't I don't like this energy sleeve. You know what you're doing, and I don't like it. Jay Hart says, this is for you, Cart. Everybody thinks they have Iowa figured out until the three tight end sets come out to play. Yeah, LaShawn Williams merchant. You got some words for Jay Hart? No, I mean if Jay Hart enjoys playing the game that way, that's on him. Um, I I can I know a lot about him as a person, though. By the way, he plays the game. Mm. No, you know what's a sicko you got to be to play with Iowa and play like Iowa does in real life in a video game. That's a little crazy. It is. It is a little crazy, and I'm not gonna put Jay Hart into a disgusting bubble, but I am going to do it. If there was a discord member to most likely end up on an offenders list, Jay Hart would be my number one call. All right. Your Serbian boiler says to hell with your driver distances. How far are you guys hitting your four irons? That will tell me a hell of a lot more about your game. Also, what's the longest putt that you feel confident stepping up to at any time? Do we look like Bryson DeChambeau to you? Who the hell has a four iron in their bag? (laughs) Do you have a four iron? I have a five iron. I have a that's five the, iron too. I don't have a four. That's the longest I got. Yeah. Sorry. Um, I, I hit my five iron about 185 if I hit it good. Yeah, I'd probably max out at like 200 with my five wood. I don't have a five iron. I got a five wood. Yeah. Um, so yeah, probably about two, two ten max, maybe if it you know runs out. Um, the longest putt I feel confident in making, like a one footer. <laughs> that's crazy uh depends on my day i'm a very hot and cold putter cart knows this if i'm hot uh i i will roll them in if i'm cold i'm not making anything it, cold if i'm if i'm gonna test something out when we play golf later this week i'm gonna stand off the green while you putt because so i think something about me being on the green might mess up your putting I, or either that or like i've been great in rounds with my dad putting this year like i might need him to just come caddy it's strange but uh, yeah, I'm either like extremely hot or extremely cold. On an extremely hot putting day, anything within 20 feet, I feel is makeable. On an extremely cold putting day, I am just shaking over a four footer. You shake when you putt? Depends on if it's a hot or cold day. Mm. Am I a good putter? I think you make putts like a good putter. Yes. I don't I don't know what I am putting wise. Like it is like I will run something past so far, but other times I will be pretty good with my speed, but it's never like all together in one. Like I never had like a just oh great speed, great line, go in. It's like one or the other. I think when you play for yourself, you make putts as if you're a pretty good putter from what I've seen. Uh in a scramble setting, I think you're a horrible putter. Because we also, that may have been us tactically, but uh, the swing happy guys wanted you to putt first and you just never hit the line that was agreed you would try to hit. Mm -hmm. That's tough. But like, but that doesn't happen. When I see you putt for yourself, there's not like a verbalized line we want you to hit and you make them. (laughs) I got to adjust. Yeah, or I mean, maybe we need to adjust. Maybe you shouldn't have been first. Maybe you should have been third. Like you don't put Miguel Cabrera in the leadoff spot, you know? You think I'm Miguel Cabrera? Yeah, I think that would be the comp. Thanks, man. You're special. Uh, Sleeve says Wednesday's show felt a bit complacent. Let's step it up from here on out. Everyone, from Greg and Carter to all the Discord members, we can all do better. You can't drop a y'all been complacent after dropping Iron Sharpens Iron comments. <laughs> Sorry, it doesn't work like that. A little crazy. I think the show felt complacent if I could uh, comment on this. I don't even really disagree with you. But I think the show felt complacent because we didn't record an episode since Thursday because we were trying to get out in front of the golf outing. So we had comments from Thursday night, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday to read through. That ended up being like an hour and 15 minutes of comments before we even got to the segments. And as much as we love doing the comments in the show in general, uh, that's just fatiguing little bit fatiguing that's probably why we sounded complacent but sleeve message heard we will step it up for you hopefully the vibes are better this show i feel like they already are and the final comment today is once again from sleeve greg since you're so high on merez and danny wolf which would you prefer two years of danny wolf or four years of merez 
For the sake of this question, let's ignore the clunky fit between Merez and Vlad. I want to be extremely clear about something. Sleeve keeps insinuating that I am like singularly, insanely high on Danny Wolf. I don't feel that to be the case. And if you think it's true, Cart, you can tell me that I'm wrong here. But I think I've just relayed what the intel has been, which has been Danny Wolf looks really good. I'm not running around doing laps saying Danny's special. Like, I'm just relaying what I've heard. We, we've we done our Big Ten top 50. Danny Wolf's third behind two other Michigan players. So I don't think I'm like out here camping for anything crazy. And uh, to this hypothetical, I would absolutely take four years of Merez with no hesitation whatsoever. Yeah. And I feel like, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure when you got donned like the, the Danny Wolf uh, Messiah. I'm sorry. Is he Jewish? Is Messiah a Jewish name? <laughs> We'll let, Riley Davis speak to that. <laughs> we'll let Riley Davis speak to that tomorrow. It's just because Sleeve always goes to like Avisage versus Danny Wolf as if they're identical. And because I think Danny Wolf's a good basketball player in college and Tom Avisage isn't. Like I, I've been branded this thing that is not what yeah. I feel like I am. Also, Sleeve, you should address the fact that uh, Tomislav has worse conditioning than Dane, sounds like. Yeah, it's not great. Also, I would like to workshop a new nickname for Tomislav. Big slob? Tom Slaw. What about Coleslaw? Like Coleslaw, but he's Tom Slaw. Why? Because Tom Slaw is kind of gross, even though some people act like it's good. And Merez is toast because I don't want, like, double toast hold the slaw to my Raising Canes people. Exactly. Damn, I lost some Raising Canes. That's the comment section. Great job, comment section today. We are brought to you by only one company. And God, is it a good company. Cartel the people who we are presented by. We are presented by the beautiful folks over at My Bookie. My Bookie, the official sports book of Sleepers Media. They have everything you need. Uh, you get advice on there, any sports you want to bet on, great odds, great, great way to play your way and get paid easily. And if I'm not mistaken, Gregory, I think the folks over at my bookie got a code that you can take advantage of by listening to this episode and using the code. And what would that code be? Promo code carts a dumbass gets you up to just kidding. That's not true. It's promo code sleepers, uh, 50% deposit bonus up to $1,000. Just want to keep you on your toes. Football season's approaching. We have football bets to make. When I say we, I mean you and me, loyal listeners. Make bets with me. Do it with my bookie. Let's all lead each other to the promised land. Uh, we are going to be betting so much college football this year, responsibly, of course, with our friends at my bookie. 50% deposit bonus up to $1,000 promo code sleepers. Take advantage of that. Get your funds right. Get your bankroll ready before kickoff of the first game of the season. Topic number one today, it's August. It's not June, but I think we can still do NBA draft content a little bit if we want to. And The Athletic recently put out a 21 and under NBA mock draft that they had three of their writers work on where they basically went through and each drafted teams of guys that if they were all put in a pool together, every NBA player, 21 years or younger, who would go first, who would go last? Uh, there were 24 players taken in this draft. Obviously, you could take more than 24 here, but it's interesting the 24 names that they landed on, and I kind of want to take the 24 players that they named and do our own rankings of them, if that works. So okay. should I read the 24 in order first and then go from there? How do you want to do this? Uh, let's read the 24. Okay, so here's the athletics order of 1 through 24. They're 21 and under NBA mock draft. First overall pick, Victor Wembanyama. Second, Paolo Bancaro. Third, Alperin Shengun. Four, Brandon Miller. Five, Derek Lively. Six, GG Jackson. Good God, Jackson. Seven, Jabari Smith Jr. Eight, Jonathan Kuminga. Nine, Amen Thompson. Ten, Cam Whitmore. Eleven, Scoot Henderson. Twelve, Asar Thompson. Thirteen, Stefan Castle. Fourteen, Josh Giddy. Ew. 15, Brandon Pajemski, 16, Modest Buzelis, 17, Jeremy Sohan, 18, Jalen Duran, 19, Kaysen Wallace, 20, Shaden Sharp, 21, Dyson Daniels, 22, Reed Shepard, 23, Zach Eady, and 24, Zachary Rissache. I, I always love when you say that name. Yeah. Uh, Alex Sar wasn't mentioned, but Zachary Rissache was. Uh, are we going to just take the 24 they used, or do we want to say we could change names? 
Are we going to ignore the fact that Zach Eady is like 23? <laughs> he's older than 21 years old. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Zach Eady, I don't think he's 23, but he's at least 22. <laughs> yeah, he's 22. He's been 22 since May. So what the hell did the athletic do here, man? I, I really do we, have to do an, <laughs> do we have to do an age check on all, like are we sure Jabari Smith Jr. is not 22? Why are people doing this to us? No, hold on one second. Because I think Jabari Smith Jr. actually Jabari like, Smith is 21. He's 21. Okay. All right. So they I mean, I guess we just let <laughs> I I think we just let uh Zach Eady just go by, I guess. Yeah, I, I guess Zach Eady is not 21. So uh Let's let's eliminate Zach Eady and add Alex Sar. Does that work? That doesn't seem. Can we add like Klingon? <laughs> you want to add somebody that's not Klingon? I, I just I just can't believe you want to add Sar. To be honest with you, I I, feel, I thought you could maybe find somebody else you would want to add. Okay, let's do Klingon. Let's that that's the Eady replacement anyway, right? No Zach Eady. Next is Donovan Klingon. Okay, let's do that. Okay. Uh all right. So let's rank these in order. Is Wemby going one? Yes. Hollow's definitely going two, right? Uh, yes. I'd also like to make it known that no matter what the underage thing this was, Wemby would be the first pick. I completely agree. Okay. I just, we we got to get that out there. Although I did spend at least one second thinking maybe I would take Paolo right now. What? No, you didn't. How, I wait, really okay. did. You took one second? Just for, but then I realized it's not about right now. It's about forever. True. But I, I think right now, Paolo has been better than Wemby. But that next year, that's going to change probably. How many silver medals Paolo got? I don't know. Blame Steve yeah. Kerr. <laughs> he, he should have a gold, right? Okay. Yeah, I guess, I guess taking a second to go, if it's for right now, that is, that's, that's a okay. Um, but so we'll go Wemby one, Paolo two. The, it opens up at three to me because they, they went Shangoon, then Brandon Miller, Derek Lively, Gigi Jackson, Jabari Smith. The Thompson twins are in there. Scoot Henderson is in there. They have Castle and Buzelis as the first names from this draft class. Reed Shepard is further down the list. Uh, to me, I want Brandon Miller third. I would want Brandon Miller above Shangoon as well. I would too. I don't know that I buy Shengun in the top four or five here. Uh given the, how this list played out, like I'm taking Shengun before Jabari Smith. Okay. Uh, I'd also, I also might take Shengun over Kaminga too. Okay. So, like, I think Shengun's certified. To, like, if Cam Whitmore's ten, then Shengun's for sure in the top ten. You like Shengu more than Cam Whitmore? Yes. Aren't you a big Whitmore guy, though? The, uh, I'm a Whitmore guy, but I don't think there's anyone in the world who would pick Cam Whitmore over uh, over Shengu. Okay. I mean, not right now. One day. I think ever. Okay. All right. Today and, today and forever. So give me a full top ten here. So we got Wemby, Paolo, Brandon Miller. Um, mm, I'll go Shangun at five. Who's four? Oh, sorry. Sorry. Shangun at four. My apologies. Okay. Shangun at four. You taking Shangun over Scoot? Yeah. So you got out on Scoot a little bit. Not out. Scoot's gonna be in there, but he's not top five. All right. Um. Okay. Well, before we get to the rest of these picks, can we just do the obvious here? Gigi Jackson's not in the top ten. No, but I am starting to wonder if I'm missing something on Gigi. I don't know if I put Gigi on this on this list, man. Well, he's on the list, so we got to rank him. Is that how we're doing this? Do we have to keep all these players that are on the list on the list. That's what I'd like to do, but also we're okay, struggling. To, we're even struggling to get to ten, so maybe we should cap this exercise at ten. No, 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 no. We can do that. W let's approach it like that. Okay. Um, I'm fine with. I would put Kaminga. I think at five. Okay. Yeah, we greatly disagree on this list. Then I wouldn't have Kaminga in my top twelve. 
top twelve. Yeah, I don't. I don't think he. I'm just would not buying have, Kaminga. Would you have Kaminga over Cam Whitmore? I I wouldn't have either of those guys in the top twelve. I wouldn't have either of those guys above Modest Buzelis. And we should I, cap this at ten. <laughs> I I don't I don't know if I would have those guys ahead of Stephon Castle, ahead of the Thompson twins. Definitely not ahead of Jabari Smith, Derek Lively. Where would you have Asar? Behind Amen. <laughs> We got the bad twin. I know that. <laughs> God, I hate getting the bad twin. Yeah. No, I don't know. I uh like he, I'll just run through what I think my top ten would be. I'd go Wemby, Ben Caro, Brandon Miller three. I'm gonna go Jabari Smith four and hope he keeps improving. I'm gonna go Amen Thompson five, Scoot six, Castle seven, Asar Thompson eight, Derek Lively nine, Buzelis ten. That's my top 10. Can we... Reed, Reed Shepard, 11, Shengun, 12. We can't get Duran in there? Duran, 13. We're positive that Duran's better than... Or that Lively's better than Duran? No, but I think Lively's getting the benefit of playing with Luka Doncic in a big way. Okay. Understood. Um. Uh, all right. I'm going to do my 10 really quick here. I'm going to go Wemby, Paolo, Brandon Miller, Shangoon. Oh, I, Jabari has improved. I'm going to go Jabari, five, Kaminga, six. Mm, Stefan Castle, seven. Amen, eight. Asar, nine. Jalen Duran, 10. Here's where I'm going to stop you. Also, it's hard for me to now consider Reed Shepard versus the Thompson Twins. Because I'm. we might be underestimating Reed Shepard in a big way here. We we have to, though. The Thompsons are that's fun, the, but they also can't score at all. That, well, that's part of... The Reed Shepherd experience. He's got to let him he stay out. Yeah. Yeah. He can't be. Yeah. I get that. Okay. Uh, I need a quick exercise from you because you had Shingoon four, Jabari Smith five, I believe. Um, I need you to look me in the eyes and tell me truthfully from the bottom of your heart if given the opportunity for the Detroit Pistons to have one of those two players under contract for the next six years, you are taking Shingoon yes. over Jabari Smith. Yes. I think that's false. I think you're in the minority. I probably am, but I also thought you were in the minority with me. And that's what Oh, the thing is, I love Jabari Smith. Also love Alperen Shangun. That dude is nasty. He's been great. I think Shangun's a lot closer to what the finished product of Shangun will be than Jabari Smith is. Is he? In my head, he is. Also, also. Okay, this exercise goes to shit once again. Shane goes 22. <laughs> okay, so hot seat the athletic. Shane Goon turned 22 on July 25th. Hot seat the athletic. Come on, I love James Edwards and the gang, but fellas, can we get the age right? Yeah, that's crazy. All right, topic number two today. We had Horvick's top 10 scorers for college basketball next season. Uh, this kind of went viral, and I think it was the CBK report account that kind of took there. And maybe it was Field of 68, one of the two. I don't remember which, but uh, it may have been both, actually. I think I've seen this a couple times in the last couple of days. Basically, Torvik's player points per game projections uh, are out, and I want to try and make sense of how far off these are with what we think are actually going to happen. It was Field of 68. So shout out Field of 68 for compiling this into a nice little graphic. The top 10 projected leading scorers for next season per Bart Torvik are Tyon Grant Foster, 19.5 points per game. Eric Dixon, Villanova, 19.5 points per game. So those two are tied, leading the country in scoring. Janai Broom, third, 19.2. Cooper Flagg. Fourth, 19.1. Josh Hubbard, 19.1 from Mississippi State. Edwards for Vanderbilt, 19.1. 
RJ Davis, North Carolina, 19 points. Marcus Burton, Notre Dame, 19 points. Peyton Sanford, 18.9 points. And Wade Taylor, Texas A&M, 18.8 points. There's your top 10 leading scorer projections. Nobody projected at 20 points or above. What did Torvik get right and what did he get wrong on this list? Uh, first of all, uh, I need to send a quick Torvik, you're under investigation. The website's down today. For, for, for maintenance, I believe. If you want to look at 2025, I started to look at it earlier and it was down. That that's crazy. And the message that was on it, like the it's under maintenance, is it's August relax. <laughs> that's crazy, man. I kind of like that. <laughs> Telling us to relax is insane. Also, maybe you're right. Um, okay. Cu- couple couple things that uh pop out to me right away here. Um there's a list with Peyton Sanford, Marcus Burton on it, and no Mark Sears. Can you say that out loud one more time for me? There's a list with Peyton Sanford on it and Marcus Burton. And no, no, uh, no Mark Sears. I don't like that. <sighs> But also, there's a lot of talent on Alabama. There's not a lot of talent on Notre Dame. Where's Walter Clayton? Not on this list. Where's a Kansas player? You think one of the Kansas players are getting to 19? I think Dixon. I think, no, sorry, not Dixon. What the hell am I talking about? I think Dickinson could get to 18. He could, but I I understand that there's not a Kansas player because there's a lot of mouths to feed in that offense. Like, you're looking for a team. Like, Texas A&M, Wade Taylor. He's got to do everything. Okay. I can buy that. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> Besides the actual player thing, like, uh, let's actually shout out to someone who commented this. Um, cause it actually had me wondering. There were 35 dudes last year that averaged 20 points a game in D1. Yeah, we there's got never been a, there's never been a season where a scoring leader didn't put up 20 a game, low major, mid major, and high major. Yeah. That's a miss. I mean, but also that's just how the model works. So I don't know. I'm sure Torvik would acknowledge that and say it as well. It can I also uh, say one more thing about the model. Please. If this comes to fruition, I'm out on college basketball this year. <laughs> it's not going to come to fruition. You, you versus promise. the you versus Torvik's model one on one to eleven. Who wins? Me eleven oh. You sure? Mm-hmm. Even if it's winners? Yeah, to, yeah, Torvik is I think he's a one handed player. Um well, I'm, I'm not saying Torvik himself. I'm saying Torvik's model. Oh, Torvik's model, uh, 11 five. Yeah, I think the model probably cooks you in a yeah. one-on-one setting. Um, my issue with this list is that Grant Foster and Dixon, I can't say those names out loud and take them seriously as like leading the entire country in scoring. Like it, Eric, Eric Dixon did average what 17 last year. He's good. He's good. But like at least if this was Janai Broom or RJ Davis or Wade Taylor, I could be like, I could see it. Like er- Eric Dixon leading the country in scoring just feels so wrong to say out loud. You know, let me go let me let me throw some positives out there too while we're here though. Love Cooper Flag at 19 again. Love that. Go all in on that. Yeah, I'm shocked because Torvik's model doesn't normally show love to freshmen like that. Do you do you actually feel like there's a good chance this happens? It doesn't, but the thing is, if you read the fine print on Torvik's website, is I don't, he doesn't rank freshman high unless that freshman gave Anthony Davis personals. Who scores more a game next year, Cooper Flag or VJ Edgecombe? Ooh. Valdez. That's kind of what I think, too. Yeah. And I like Coop at 19, but I, I think there's a word where Valdez is at 20 for Baylor. I mean, shit, given how Baylor does guards and the, the scoring prowess that he has, I could that, I could easily see him getting to 20. Out of the 10 on this list, what would you set the line at for, like, over-under on those guys being there in the top 10 at the end of the year? In the top 10? Yeah. I'd set the line at four. At four? No, I wouldn't, because there's going to be a lot of smaller schools that just overtake these guys. I'd set the line at two and a half. What if it's Power Five guys, Power Five conferences? Power Five guys, I'd set the line at four and a half. 
So I think Sam, Sanford will be close to 20. Wade Taylor will be close to 20. Burton will be close to 20. RJ should be 20. Broom will be close to 20. I think everybody else is in like the 17 range. Yeah, I think Davis will be on here. I I actually like the Marcus Burton shout. I think yeah. he is gonna I think he is gonna get buckets this year for for Notre Dame. Yeah. I also am a Peyton Sanford guy. Peyton Sanford average <laughs> Peyton Sanford being the beneficiary of being the number one option on Iowa and putting up 18 a game would be hilarious, but also at the same time, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, I think it's gonna happen. Um I just realized there's a probably a world where Doug McDaniel scores more than all of these people. Is there a world where Braden Smith is on this list? Uh, I'm gonna slow. I'm gonna slow it down a little bit. I love Braden, but I I don't think he's gonna be a top ten scorer in the country. Yeah, that's. I mean, I I feel like Hunter Salas could get a shot on this list. Mark Sears not being on is definitely crazy. Um. Uh, I was. I mean, otherwise, like you know, good on Torvik. One to ten. What do you grade this list? Uh, I'm going to do that classic thing that you did for the, uh, everyone starts at a 10. Okay. Uh, I'm going to minus one for Grant Foster one and minus another one for Eric Dixon at, at two. So that's going to get us to eight. Um, I'm also going to minus two for Hubbard and Edwards. So that gets you down to six. No Sears. That gets you down to five. I feel good right there. I'll give it five out of 10, maybe four out of 10. Yeah, I give it a C plus out of 10. Final topic is something that has been discussed in our Discord, I think for months at this point, but it's it's constantly new people that I'm having the conversation with. So I think like every time it pops up, it's a new conversation, but it's a different person kind of making the point against me and we get in a debate about it. Anyways, the way I'm going to frame this is this. Uh, it, it always comes up centered around Purdue. It always comes up centered around Braden Smith and it is a non Purdue fan who basically hypothesizes, Hey, since Zach Eady has gone, there's a world where Braden Smith has a production drop off. And and that's said in different ways. It's sometimes it said Braden Smith could be worse. Sometimes it said his production could get worse. Sometimes it said he might score the same or more, but his assists are going to drop. Sometimes it's said he's going to be less efficient. There's a bazillion different ways people have basically just tried to present. Yeah, Braden might not be as good as you think because Zach Eady's gone and he might take a step backwards or he might stagnate. This is Braden Smith, who was the first team All Big Ten player last year. He's the only returning first team All Big Ten guy this year. He's the projected best player in this league. And... I think it's fair. I think it's fair criticisms that people are like, maybe it's not going to be easy. Maybe it's not going to be straightforward. Let's just think about it. With that said, anytime this conversation comes up, and this week it's with Tertial. So shout out to Tertial in the Discord. He's an Illinois fan. There's been other people before Tertial that I've had this conversation with in the offseason. Every time this comes up, I ask the person making the point, can you give me an example of a first-team all-conference player that lost a star teammate and then got worse when more opportunity was put on his plate. And every time I ask for that, I don't get any answers. So I want to have this conversation with you because a lot of people just like to throw out like Braden Smith's probably going to get worse now that Zach Eadie's out. I don't think that's real. And I think we have a bunch of historical evidence that it's not real with your team, with my team, with other teams. So let's talk about it. Did you, um, what do you feel about? And I think it was Tersha that made the argument about the the definition of a drop in productivity, because I think he brought up like uh, D Brown as an example. Yeah. Like D Brown's stats went up, but I think his percentages went down. Like and and objective or subjectively, I think the word is many would say he had a worse year, even though he had better stats. I guess. I don't think he had better stats. And now we're getting into a semantics thing of better. But if if we are using D Brown as an example, which is one that Tertial brought up in the Discord, shout out to Tertial. D Brown's junior season, that was the really special Illinois season that included Darren Williams, Luther Head, Roger Powell, James Augustine, D Brown, right? Uh, D Brown was a first team All American that year, 
He averaged 13.3 points a game, 4.5 assists a game. He shot 50% from the floor, 43% from three. He was completely nuclear. That was an aberration, by the way, because D. Brown didn't do that his first two seasons. So being super efficient was like a new thing for D. Brown his junior year. That team was special. They went to the national championship game. D. Brown was a first-team All-American. Talking about he he took a dip or he got worse or whatever you want to say from junior to senior year. What happened? His scoring went up from 13.3 points to 14.2 points. His assists went up from 4.5 assists to 5.8 assists. He was just really inefficient. He went from 50% from the floor to 36% from the floor. And he went from 43% from three to 32% from three. That is obviously a worse season. That is obviously way more inefficient. And that's also one of the more drastic decreases I think you could find. Like it's pretty rare for a player to go down 14% from the floor if that's what we're going after. So Mm -hmm. I I hear that. That's actually not a bad example. When I've asked people for examples of somebody who gets worse as a first team whatever player who comes back, loses stars. D. Brown lost Darren Williams and Luther Head and Roger Powell, replacing three guys, not just one. And again, his points and assists go up, but he's less efficient. That's a worse year. That's fine. You know what else that year was for D. Brown, though, Cart? He won the Koozie Award for best point guard in the country. So, like, I, I can't sit here and say that a guy who was a first team All American as a junior and then as a senior was a second team All American and the Koozie Award winner. Like, he, he didn't hit a wall. Was he worse? Yeah. Was he less efficient? Yeah. But, like, this entire argument is framed in, like, well, if Braden Smith gets worse, Purdue's cooked. Illinois wasn't bad because of D. Brown that final year when he won the Koozie Award. Illinois was bad because they had nobody step up and replace Darren and Luther and Roger Powell. And I think if we're if we're projecting this back to Purdue, Purdue might be a lot worse this season than they were last season. Reasons that I can accept of why Purdue might be worse would be, hey, Miles Colvin and Cam Heidi are completely overwhelmed. They're just they're not ready to be good basketball players. That could happen. Trey Kaufman Red just isn't good enough. He he's our new big and he's not good enough. That could happen. Purdue's not going to be bad because Braden Smith hits a wall. Like that's that's just not happening. First team all conference players do not get drastically worse when they get more opportunity. It doesn't happen. And I have a bazillion examples that work in favor of my side of the argument here. And the best example anyone's given, shout out to Tertial, is D Brown, who won the award for best point guard in the country. Like that's an insane argument, and it happened 20 years ago. Yeah, he's just he's it's just not gonna like. The thing is, the worst part about this is, is his, if he averages like 0.5 points less, two percentage points less shooting well or something like that, we're just going to hear the loudest critics of told you so, told you so. And it's just not the case. Like, Braden Smith was not a first team all Big Ten player because of Zach Eady. He was a good basketball player as a sophomore, might I add. Like he's going to be good again this season. Stop trying to come up with reasons. I like I'm even over here right now, just like trying to go through and find examples of like a guy who was first team all Big Ten or first team all conference one year and came back the next year and was was worse. It doesn't happen. That's my point. Like, and and depending on how you define worse, because again, and like and, and also like what is it like if Braden Smith is second team all Big Ten this year, are we gonna be like, oh shit, he had an awful year? Honestly, I would. I think that's down for Braden. But like, but like also like it could be good. Like, what if somebody's really good? Yeah, it could. Um, and look, I the D Brown example is actually a good example because he was definitely a better basketball player his junior year than his senior year. But the point is, even as D Brown stagnated or whatever, he was literally the best player in his position in the sport. So, like, if that's what we're saying here, like, oh, Braden stagnates. Okay. What if Braden's exactly the same guy he was last year? Or or just a little inefficient, but the same numbers, but more inefficient. He's still the best point guard in the Big Ten, if not in the country. So 
I, like you, you need to present me with a reason why you think there's something with his game that's going to get significantly worse. And I, I just don't think people have given any reasoning for that other than, well, Zach, he wasn't that good and, and or, or was that good. And it's the same people who told us when Zach Eady was here, they were making the argument that Edie was just big. Like, which one is it? When Edie was in the uniform, everyone was downplaying how special he actually was. And now that he leaves, everybody says, well, it was all Edie. Nobody else is good. It just, it feels like the argument keeps moving. People just don't want to give Braden Smith credit. I don't get it. To, to conclude my stance on this, I have a couple examples that do fall into my argument here. Let's compare Braden to the guy he is most statistically similar to in Big Ten history. The guy that he's trying to chase down the assist record for. In fact, Braden Smith tied with him, I believe, through two seasons. Cassius Winston, an all-time great Big Ten guard from just a couple of seasons ago. At the end of Cassius Winston's sophomore season card, he averaged 12 points a game, 7 assists a game. There are people who could have looked at Cassius Winston and that Michigan State team and said, you know what? It's going to get a lot harder on Cassius because Jaron Jackson's gone and Miles Bridges are, is gone. He lost two NBA stars, two all Big Ten players. And we're replacing them with Kenny Goins and Matt McQuaid and a freshman. Like that's It's going to be really hard on Cassius. He's going to take a dip. You know what happened? No, Cassius went from being a fourth option facilitator to a bona fide superstar who averaged 19 points a game and eight assists. And I'm not saying Cassius Winston, better scorer than Braden Smith. It's true. But guys that are that good don't get worse when you give them more opportunity. It doesn't happen. Braden Smith is going to use more possessions this year. That is a good thing because Braden Smith is a star. He's a great basketball player. And I'll use another example. This is probably a better one because people will say Braden's just not as good as Cassius. This is a better one. Nick Stauskas, okay? Trey Burke and Tim Hardaway Jr., incredible superstar players. Trey Burke was transcendent. Nick Stauskas is a role player. Those guys leave. They go to the draft. Michigan goes to the championship game. They lose. Sound like anybody? Yeah. What's coming back next year? Oh, they're going to really struggle. They're going to be really young. It's, you know, Stauskas is just a shooter. He can't do a thing. No, Nick Stauskas was a killer from the day he stepped on campus. And when you moved all of Trey Burke's ball screen possessions to Nick Stauskas, he became the best player in the Big Ten. So it, it, there's a bazillion examples that work in favor of that. Guys who are all conference players who return and step into a bigger role. You get better when that happens you don't get worse and anyone who is skeptical of the purdue stuff i get it but you should be skeptical of the unproven pieces of purdue don't be skeptical of the proven star that everyone's going to vote as the free season player of the year in the big 10 just because zach edie has gone it makes no sense to me and it feels disrespectful yeah I, I like i said i'm not i i don't know to me it's not even like an argument that like Braden's just good and Braden's going to be good this year yeah yeah, um, I mean, shit, Illinois, like, Io and Kofi, when Io leaves, Kofi's really going to drop off. No, he's better. <laughs> he's more productive because he used more possessions. Like, Is there an Iowa example for this? Like, Chris Murray's going to stink when Keegan leaves or something like that? Yeah, Chris Murray wasn't probably wasn't Chris that good. It might have been Keegan when Luca was there. Yeah, maybe it was that. Um, I had an Indiana example from a while ago, too, but I'm forgetting what it was. Jalen Hutchinson is not going to be shit without Xavier Johnson. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ! <laughs> oh man, just just put some respect. Good players are good, man. We don't gotta overthink every single thing. I don't get it. One big thing presented by my bookie. We love my bookie. There's a promo code for my bookie. Promo code sleepers gets you a fifty percent deposit match bonus up to one thousand dollars. Link in the description of this video. What's your one big thing card? What is what sweet treat does bookie rhyme with? Cookie. Where would you rank cookies on your sweet treat rankings? Number two. Where do Rice Krispies fall into that? Number seven. Really? I thought they'd be higher. But for me, I think Rice Krispies are top five, right? But the thing about Rice Krispies is, Greg, Rice Krispies are just, 
I mean, it is literally just sugar in a square, right? Like, but you just want to just house Rice Krispie treats all the time. Truly do. I found the solution for the lovers out there who want Rice Krispie treats. Well, for also the, maybe for not the, have, for the lovers out there, for the Rice Krispie lovers out there that maybe don't want all that sugar. And honestly, I'm noticing the big back comments on Twitter. So I'm really locking in and I'm going to see y'all. I bookmarked all those tweets. But I got something for y'all here. Oh. So there's this brand, right? Made good. They have all different types of flavors of Rice Krispie treats, right? Um, now, this is my first time trying these. A regular Rice Krispie treat is probably somewhere like 100 and, I don't know, 50, 60 calories, probably uh, each Rice Krispie treat. This one is half of that and probably even like three-fourths of the sugar or something that a regular Rice Krispie treat has. So I'm going to try this right now. This is the chocolate chip flavor. And I'm going to let you know, G, if this will suffice for any people who have Rice Krispies in their top 10. And for all you lovers out there, you pay attention. Mm. Okay. So the thing is, it's good. But, like, I'm not going to come on here and lie to y'all. This does not hit like a regular Rice Krispie treat. It's really fibery, I feel like, if that's the word, the right word to use. Like, it's good, but it's no, like, kind of scotch or root. Yeah, that does, uh, just from the eye test, it looks like you're biting into, like, a, one of those really gross granola bars that's just way too fibery. Mm, yeah, but it, but, it, but it's like, oh, it's good, though. Okay. So is it good? Does, does it, Car, does it get a boom? I think I'm going to give this one a boom. <laughs> nice. Good work. I hate that family. Is it my turn? If you'd like it to be. I have two big things. The first big thing is this. Uh, yeah, you I, have, do. I have a confession. I actually love the boom family. Oh, like I, I can't get enough of them. Stop, Greg. <laughs> I love it. I watch every single video and every single time I'm entertained from start to finish. You don't even like Costco. I love the boom though. I love Why do I feel like you've never been to Costco? I've been in a Costco like twice. I don't think it's special. Everybody gasses it up. It's not. It's like congrats, you've been to a store before. <laughs> like <laughs> it's I, I'm that way with all grocery type things though. Like Trader Joe's, Costco, like cool. I'm happy my wife likes these places. I don't need to like come to Sam's Club with you to see what an aisle looks like. I don't think you're getting the full experience because you're a Costco guy. You would thrive in Costco. I'm not. People always tell me I'm a Costco guy, and I take that as an insult. I am no, not you are. Costco. No, I'm not. Yeah, you are. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm going to change your name on my phone to Costco guy. That seems a little extra. Uh, my one big thing is another rendition of what am I holding? What am I holding, Cart? Uh, ooh. Okay, you got a babysitter there today. You're holding uh, like a no, you're holding Murph's nap monitor. I'm holding an on air recording sign. Nice. You still have I still got that too. On air recording. Yeah, That's I got one. I'm... I got I got one at the door for the podcast and then I got one at uh the bedroom door. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>